Okay, we're here with Ron Peterson and we're doing an interview. I'm Don Feaster. And, and I'm not. And this is Ron Peterson. And I'm Meredith Blackwell, and this is part of the oral history for mycology product, project. So we're glad you're watching. <laughs> and so what we want to do is talk to Ron about his career, which spans several different techniques. Centuries. But techniques. techniques well, that too. And, and different groups. Yes. And so we'll start asking Ron about his early life. Were you born legitimately? Um, some people think so. Good. Yeah, especially the woman that gave birth to me. Um, yes, I was born legitimately in uh, Jersey City, New Jersey. Um, and that was a place where Boss Haig. Um, I've heard of him. Yeah, and, and I was a very deep depression baby. 1934. It sounds like a, an answer, but it really ended right there. Well, well, tell us about your family. My family, Karen, about two years ago, gave me a one-year subscription to Ancestry.com. So I learned a, a, a lot more about my family than I, than I knew before. And um, it is, uh, I am 98% Northern European. Um, my one side of my family came up from a place called Schleswig-Holstein. I've heard of that and, in history class. And that has kicked around between um, Denmark and Germany, and that accounts for the SEN on my name. Uh -huh. um, and the other part of my family comes from Alsace-Lorraine. Mine um, too. And it kicked around between France and Germany. Um, so I am, I'm a mixed breed. Well, that's sort of what I am, uh, Alsatian and uh, Northern European, really? according to Ancestor. There was a guy by the name of de Wildemann mm -hmm. in uh, Strasbourg, um, and he did some uh, aquatic um, uh, algae that he thought were algae, and they turned out to be uh, fungi. And my great-grandfather's name was Wildemann, mm. but he was a baker. And I suspect he didn't know his uncle, you know, Mr. Develdemon, the mycologist. Interesting. So I, I'm remembering, did you go off to Colgate? I did. Yeah. I own two t-shirts <laughs> from, from Colgate okay. that I wear religiously. All right. I, I'm not sure why I remembered that, but I, I did know that, that you had gone to Colgate. Why was that of interest to you? Well, this upstate New York stuff, and, uh, you know, I was at Cornell, and... Oh, uh, uh, yeah, but you, you were know, there for a different degree. I was, indeed, yes. I went there for that same degree. To where? You went where? You went to Columbia. Cornell. Yeah. Lasted one semester. I, I thought there was something there, too. <laughs> and who were you working with? Richard Korf. Okay. <laughs> and so then you went to Columbia? I did, because I flunked out of Cornell. You flunked out? You? Yes. Yes. Um, you must not have gone to class. Now, if you want a 20-minute interview, I can do the next 18 minutes on how come I flunked out of Cornell but I'm not sure that's interesting to you. <laughs> well, I think it's, in, it's Might intriguing. be, might be. <laughs> Colgate was an extended family. Um, and I went there and immediately fell into a support group of other freshmen. I got into a fraternity and that was more support group. And then I went to Cornell and the bottom fell out of all the support groups. And I turned out to be a very lonely guy. And that meant that that dictated to me, having come from northern New Jersey, I can go home for the weekends. There was a plant pathology course that was taught on Friday afternoons in the lab. It was called Plant Pathology One. Yeah. Yes. And, and that was the one I had to miss if I wanted to drive home for the weekend. Ah, well, that wouldn't work. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't work. And at the end of the semester, they had gathered five professors around a table to, uh, to quiz me as uh, using the excuse that this is the final exam, an oral exam on uh, Plant Pathology I, okay. which I did not do well in. Do you remember who was teaching that? Boothroyd. Carl, Carl Boothroyd. He was teaching it when I was there as a graduate student. Mm -hmm. When were you there? 
71 to oh. 74. So no, 70, 68 to 67 <laughs> to 67 <laughs> to 71. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so let's leave Carnell and go yeah. to Columbia. Why did you pick Columbia? Uh, because I had applied to Columbia at the same time I applied to Cornell, and I had been accepted at Columbia as well as Cornell. And so when, Colum when Cornell um, had the perspicacity of saying <laughs> no thank you to me, um, I had Corn I had Columbia to fall to fall back on. Good, yeah. and you worked with Lindsay Olive. I went there on provi as a provisional student because of my career at Cornell, <laughs> um, and I promptly got a C in my college under um, Lindsay Olive, and he gave me some extra work that I could do to raise it to a B minus. That's how I came became became a mycologist. <laughs> it's called scraping through. <laughs> So you work in a very different area from what I think of Olive is working on. Yes, he thought so too. <laughs> but what um, did you work on there? You worked on, you were working on hyphomycetes, right? That's because he decided after another tale that I could tell you, he said to me one afternoon, you know what? You are a taxonomist. You are not a geneticist because he had me working on genetics things. He had me working on a little coprinus called coprinus ephemeris, although I suspect it might not have been that. Um, and that was, was uh, coincident with the late discovery of isotopes and their use in looking at things. Right, you know, right. Tratoscantia yeah, hairs yeah. and so forth. And, and he had me putting coprinus spores under a UV lamp and and the lo and behold when you then plated out those spores I got a white spored coprinus and I announced to him that I think I have a new genus <laughs> coprinus has to have black spores I've got a white spored coprinus um, and and he was not impressed <laughs> So how did you ever finish? <laughs> I, I finished there, but but he decided that I was a, 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 a taxonomist, um, and I, that's another story. So I wound up looking. Cecil Terence Ingold's paper had papers had just become um, coming out, um, and Lindsay Olive was fascinated by these spore forms and so forth. So he took me up to the New York Botanical Garden where next to a trail there was a little spring and he said go get some water samples from that and we'll see what's in there and i thought this was cold water and i thought there's not going to be anything in here but there were two or three different uh, aquatic hyphomite seeds in there and the rest is history as they say but then you became a geneticist i did not kind of Mating, I, I did not. Mating studies. Well, yeah, I backed into that. So I was the, the story is I was in China, and I was looking for um, clavarioid fungi. Go back another generation. Clark Rogerson and I in a car in Highlands, North Carolina. I wanted. I had. I was still just about finished with my PhD. And the grand total of these aquatic hyphomycetes that had been described was in the number of 44. I already had 42 from the New York area and the mountains of, of the Southern Appalachians. Now that sounds like diminishing returns to me. <laughs> Not only that, but I wanted part of the action and the action was mushroomoids, mm -hmm. you know, fleshy fungi. Mm -hmm. Okay, now who's doing the hiddens? Ken Harrison's doing the hiddens. Who's doing the mushrooms? Alex Smith. Who's doing the telephorus? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? And silence fell in the car. All the groups were taken. And about a half hour later, Clark said, nobody's doing the clavarius. I said, I am. <laughs> and I spent the next, what, 25 years doing clavarioid fungi. Yeah. 
Okay, so we got to get you to Tennessee. <laughs> you didn't yes. do a postdoc in those um, at that time, or uh, did you? <laughs> First of all, I went to the University of Buffalo, New York, oh, okay. which was then bought out by SUNY. Um, and that became SUNY Buffalo, one of the four gems of the, of the SUNY system. And, and the, the tenor of the, of, the, of the campus changed. An influx of money that you wouldn't believe. This was under Nelson Rockefeller, who had a bunch himself. And, and I got more and more a fish out of water. I was a taxonomist. I went in the field. Nobody understood that in this department that I found myself in because we were now part of the medical school. And you were there as an assistant professor? I was. Yeah. Um, I got there in 1961, and I left there 1st of January 65. And I had been down with Clark Rogerson down to, to um, the biological station at Highlands, and we had been invited to come across the mountains and collect with Hessler. And so we did that not once, but twice, two years in a row. Went back to Buffalo, of course, and decided I was getting restless. But there was a job open at North Carolina State, the one that Royal Moore eventually right. got. Um, and I wrote to Hessler and asked him for a letter of recommendation. And he said he'd be happy to write one, but did I, I know that there was a position open at Tennessee? <laughs> I did not know there was a position open at Tennessee, and nobody else did either. <laughs> but Hessler had been dean for years, and he had more pull than and he needed. And so I, I went down there and interviewed for it, only to find out I was the only candidate. Um, and I got there because Hessler said I should. Now I'm at Tennessee. Okay. Yeah, no, that's great. You've been there a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm always intrigued by um, the clavarioids and your relationship with Corner. <laughs> yes. Yes. You want to say anything? Um, <laughs> Corner had a, had a personality um, and and as time went by, I learned more and more about the personality. But one of the things that Corner had said in, in publication was that, that he did not want to deal with these shriveled skeletons of, of, uh, of uh, specimens in the herbaria. And, and somehow I had gotten the idea that there were type specimens and that one ought to be careful about using types and that kind of nomenclature. Oh, sure. Well, we ran at right angles to one another, and we, uh, we had a, a, a very interesting and profound communication for several years. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> you know his son, yes. who saw him last when the son was 18 years old, yes. has yes. written a book. Yes. Have you read the book? I have not. Okay. Um, my father but I had a lot of communication with his son, son, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been very interested in talking to mycologists. Well, yeah. it's it's only been very recently that I've gotten another glance into the history of World War II, mm -hmm. um, and and this has kind of awakened me again to the whole idea of Singapore, um, and my paragon, um, Marinus Anton Donk. Donk. Yeah. Okay. He was a prisoner of war, not a prisoner of war. He was a prisoner, not necessarily yeah. of war, in Indochina. And, and being treated rather rudely by the Japanese. And over here was Corner in Singapore writing the Clavarioid Fungi book. Um, and, and when John came, when John Jr. came out with his book, um, I was really kind of disinterested in it. But now I have awakened that history of World War II. Yeah. Yeah. So, so can you tell us a little bit about Olive? Because I don't know very many mycologists that knew him well, and even Dr. Alex. And I think Dr. Alex might have been a little bit afraid of him. Was he a harsh person? Or? Um, he, was, he was a removed person. Okay. Um, he and Jeannie lived about a block and a half away from the, the, uh, the building at uh, Columbia overlooking Morningside Park. Um, 
and I never knew him to be active within the department socially at all. Mm -hmm. um, he was, he had gotten his degree from North Carolina. North Carolina, maybe to this day, I don't know, was rather inbred. And so there was an opportunity for him to either stay or come back to North Carolina. And lo and behold, when I got to Tennessee within a year, they were, Chapel Hill was advertising for a mycologist and I applied for the job. Little did I know that the other guy who was applying <laughs> for the job was Lindsay Olive. Yeah, and maybe they had made the job. Well, him. the thing, I would have been applying to as a beginning associate professor. He was looking at the endowed chair, the Keenan professor. And of course he got it and went back to North Carolina. But between Coker and Couch, he was a North Carolinian student. He, uh, that was his life. Right. And every, every spring we would have exams at, at Columbia. And, and as the last paper came in on that exam, Jeannie was down on the street in their Volkswagen waiting for him and away they'd go down to Highlands where they owned a, a, a cottage. Um, and so his, he was south, um, and, and that was a different kind of person. He had worked on jelly fungi for a while. Yeah, it was worked in Louisiana. On, on nuclear, nuclear uh, activity, nuclear behavior mm -hmm. um, in the higher uh, fungi and so forth. And it was only later that B.O. Dodge, the Norospora man, um, was part of the, the, of the Columbia uh, uh, group and and olive found sordaria a uh, little thing the little ask on my seat that grows on dung right. um and found out that he could put the spores he could grow the thing under uv light and he could get white asca spores and black asca new spores. Genera. yeah new genus <laughs> right <laughs> and he could count them in the ascus you know yeah. two 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 and yeah. four four yeah. and so forth um and, th and that was what carried him on until finally he got into the cellular slime balls. Yeah, how and, did that happen? Um, yeah. I don't really know, but he was a, 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 a very great devotee of Tahiti. He and Jeannie went over there repeatedly. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know whether that had anything to do with that, but I know the last couple of times they went, he was there ostensibly to collect cellular slime molds. Um, not doing any genetics of, uh, yeah. of ascomycetes. Did, did he have any connection with, uh, with Kenneth Raper? Because Kenneth... They knew one Raper. another. Yeah. yeah, I just wondered, because Raper, yes. I think, yeah. started a little right. bit earlier. Well, oh, that's with... right. And before that even was a guy by the name of Carol yeah. W. Dodge. Right. Um, and he had done what turned out to be the, some of the cellular slime molds. A crazyest and so forth. No, and so yeah. Was that was no, that C W Dodge? That was. Uh, 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 it was another. Uh, Haskins. Ed Haskins, yes. Did, He's much was, later, though, isn't was he? Was he? I, I but, wondered what did he do? Cellular slime walls, or did he do mixico mix mixomycetes? Has, he Haskins did a did crazy kind of, uh, I thought he did okay. a kind of spraying. Uh, well, uh, yeah, C W kind of Dodge. I think of. Um, you know, because, medical. well, he did the book on medical mycology, but he had done some earlier work that was kind of physiological with with Duggar. Mm. Uh, and then C.W. Dodge came and was at the Farlow as a curator uh, during the time that they were moving from after Farlow died and they were moving into the new building, the old building, you know, the building we are in now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was responsible for much of the work in the collections and organizing things there. And then he went off to Missouri but, and worked on lichens and the Antarctic lichens and it's, various that's... other things. But he did the medical mycology book because Thaxter said, here's a way for us to make a mark here. He'd never worked in medical mycology at all, but they decided that he should do this medical mycology book. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, I, so I'm not sure. So maybe he did somewhere work. Essentially, well, he did the Goyman and Dodge yeah. translation. Yeah, that was very useful. Yeah, mm. Dodge, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm thinking of, of Duggar, 
No. Duggar was at Missouri and did cultivated mushrooms ah. and mushroom farming. And yes, kind of what, what's rattling around was some guy went to, uh, to the Farlow and was a curator. And as I read about this, I thought, this, this guy was not a curator by birth. He was not a taxonomist and a classifier and a collector and so forth. But I don't remember whether it was Duggar. And it sounds Duggar like it never, might have been. Duggar was never at the Farlow. Oh, I'm sorry. Who were you talking about? C.W. CW Dodge. C.W. Uh, Dodge. Okay. That's part of the plea that you, you need to edit out. <laughs> You've got plenty here to work on. <laughs> okay. So, so what about another person you worked with? Hessler. Hessler? Um, a Hoosier. Yeah, he was one of the Wabash guys. Yes, wasn't he? exactly. Yeah, I went to Cornell. Yes, exactly. And as we came by Crawfordsville on our drive up here, um, Karen got re re regaled by 15 minutes <laughs> yeah, of uh, yeah. of that conduit. Yeah, no, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, and and just to add a little pepper on top, um, my first graduate student was a guy by the name of Paul Olexia who uh, eventually, not eventually, pretty quickly wound up um, on the Michigan. faculty at Kalamazoo College. Yeah. Um, and he came out of Wabash. <laughs> so here was Hessler and a bunch of other Wabash people coming into Cornell in the beginning of all of this. And here was Alexia um, at the very other end of the career. Yeah. And they must have let some others out of Cornell because uh, Emory. Emory was Wabash, and he went to oh, Michigan. Oh, I, I didn't know that. That's, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, he's from Crawfordsville. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. So he was a... He was right there on the spot. Inborn guy, yeah. right. Yeah. Played, uh, played jazz and on the piano in bars to put, his, put himself through school. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So, what about your work in taxonomy? I was going to say... I think it sounds like we're about finished now. No, no, no. no. We haven't talked about your taxonomy. Um, the thing was that, that here I found myself in China, and I was supposed to be looking for Clavarioid fungi, and it was dry. I was there with a, a, my graduate student, Wu Shu Xin. Um, she was working on something called Clavii corona, mm -hmm. now called Artomyces. And she was finding stuff. And she decided that she needed to, to build herself a transfer hood out of a cardboard box and a Bunsen burner. Well, when she set, set flame onto her, you know, <laughs> here we in the, were, were gifted with a lab that they were giving us, and here are these flames shooting up there. But at any rate, it was dry. But the one thing that was up was pleurotus. And I decided, it, you know, God's giving me this pleurotus <laughs> now. I better just seize it. And so we came back with, I suppose, 20 collections of pleurotus, which led to single spore isolates of pleurotus. And the next thing you know, that was the next 10 years or more of all different fungi. Um, now it was a different co technique to collect fungi. You've got to get a spore print um, so that you can dilute that down and so forth. So that if, if, if mating systems are genetics, then I guess I had a chapter at least. At yeah. that time, that, that was very, <coughs> very much so, I think. Uh, so I remember two talks of yours. One was Salome and the... <laughs> And the Taxonomy and the veils. seven veils. Seven veils yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one was your presidential address where we couldn't get into the room where the projector was and you had to give it on the blackboard. Um, I, I remember that one as being somewhat different than, than what you suggest. Seems to me we did get in the room, but the projector didn't work. And I wound up doing mating squares. Yeah. Imagine, yeah. You know, imagine a square and imagine the plus signs up in this corner and this corner, <laughs> you know, and just about that time the projector worked. And okay. the, the audience was was saved from <laughs> from another three quarters of an hour I, of imaginary squares. I think the chalk talk went really well. well <laughs> People still comment about it. Those who were there, uh, were you there? Yeah, I yeah. was there. Yeah, yeah were you well, there for the seven bales? Yeah, there I was. Are, there are all kinds of reasons for talking about a talk. <laughs> uh, the seven now, the bales. Seven bales so. I don't know whether you sent me a copy of the TypeScript. 
I don't know why you would have had a no, copy of it. No, I don't think I but did. But whatever it was, about 10 years ago, I finally <laughs> recycled it. You know, there was, there, this was nothing no. but in, incrimination, <laughs> and I better just get rid of it while I can. But, but that was a, another period for you, thinking about nomenclature and uh, history and freeze and all of that. How, how did yeah. that happen? Well, history has always been a thread um, through much of this. Um, I've said before that, that, that my mentor and hero was M.A. Donk. Um, and Donk was secretary of the Special Committee for Fungi and Lichens. Right quite a while and he died and that's a story in itself because I was supposed to go collecting with him wound up in Germany called the guy that was supposed to be my host who told me in German that Donk is dead and I had to say to him Toda you know yeah 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 well at any rate he died a year goes by and I'm at Beltsville and I'm in their herbarium, which was ill lit at that moment and kind of down the basement of a building. I don't remember, I remember much it, about yeah. it. And I'm walking down between the cases and so forth. And a voice behind me says, Peterson, I need to talk to you. It was Franz Staffleur. Uh -huh. Okay. And I only knew Staffleur by, by name. I, would not have deigned to extend my hand in hopes of a handshake. And so I turned around and I didn't know who it was and, and waited for this gentleman to come. And he said, I want you to be secretary of the, of the nomenclature committee. Um, and I said to him, you know, I don't know that much about the, the, the position and so forth. Let me think about it. No, no, don't think about it. Just, I want you to be there. And so that was, the yeah. next 10 years or 12 years was spent uh, as, as secretary to that committee. Yeah. So that got you interested in history more. I was thinking again, we were just about finished with this, weren't we? <laughs> we're not gonna let you go. Yeah, there's, there's a 10 <laughs> second pause is... Uh... <laughs> we, we think slowly. Uh, but we're double teaming here. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I'm also thinking, I met Step Blue once and I had brought a, a six pack of beer to Billy Turner's party. Uh -huh. I and can, he was a good there. place to bring it. And so everybody was drinking wine and Step Blue and I sat at the kitchen table and, and drank my beer. So it was really? A, yes. He was a gin man. It, he drank beer that day, there was no gin, so it was beer or wine. And he suffered from terrible migraine headaches. Yeah. Um, and and so bad that he had to go underneath the bed of the, in the hotel where he was staying just to get out of all of the light. And strangely, they found out rather late in his life that it was the brand of Gilby's gin. Huh. And when he changed he was, the yeah. label on the gin, he was okay. Yeah. I knew him uh, and met him lots of times because they would come to Harvard to yep. do the TL2 literature right. search and so forth. So, you know, we would escort them and take them to various libraries so yes. that they could see all the literature Absolutely. and so forth. Uh, yep. You know, that is a pretty major piece of mycological oh, history, yes. too, that they. You know, the first edition had no cryptogams, no, nothing but flowering plants. The one, TL2, one volume. The one volume. Yeah. And then they did decided to include the cryptogams, all these other groups. And I think by the time they got through the first volume, they thought, hmm, what did we do to ourselves? But uh, they, you know, it really is uh, a fantastic um, reference. I had, when I was at Columbia, <clears throat> um, I spent quite a bit of time, at least the summers, there was a woman by the name of Gertrude Burlingham. Oh yeah. And she had um, endowed uh, a Burlingham scholarship. Rushella and Lactarius. Um, was well, yeah, she that was her on. game, right. Yeah, that's um, what she worked on. And, and it was in litigation, I guess her will or whatever it was. And just about the time I came up to some year in my graduate career where I had nothing but I had no prospects for the summer and therefore no beans on the table, as they say. Yeah. Um, and Clark Rogerson, another one of my mentors, said, uh, you might be interested in a, in a Burlingham uh, uh, endowment for the summer. 
Oh, says I. Oh. Um, and it was almost like tailor-made. You know, I, I came this way and yeah. Gertrude Burlingham's litigation came this way and there were the two of us together. But I graduated and I had spent so many hours in the stacks at, uh, at the New York Botanical Garden. And then I began hearing the same kinds of tales about uh, uh, Staflu and Cowan. Um, and they'd come, they'd de de descend upon the New York Botanical Garden and they'd spend three days in the stacks. Yeah. You know, here, photocopy this. Here, photocopy this. Ah, wonderful stuff. Yeah. No. It, it, and but... now you can't get in the stacks. And if you don't think that pisses me off, <laughs> you, you know, because at the time you could go in there and you could find 1828 literature and that much of it, and you didn't know that this, this, and this even existed, that, and that, there they were. It's the discovery that you have when you're in the stacks, when you're looking, you find things that you didn't know existed. Sometimes you find things that the librarians didn't know right. existed. Right, sure, you know, sure. So I spent, I've spent several hours looking at Bouillard, oh, um, for tough. example, and writing an index yeah. to Bouillard. Unfortunately, I was indexing the wrong Bouillard, but that's the way that goes. Yeah, there are many versions. That's yes, right. Yeah. 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 All right, I'm ready for the next. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Oh, uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm at your mercy. <laughs> okay. Dr. Alexopoulos always told us that all of your students always got jobs in their area. There were waves, you know. Um, there was a wave that came out of Cornell. And if you looked around the country for 10 or 15 years, all of those positions were filled by Corf students from Cornell. That wave somehow subsided. There were jobs that Alex Smith's students uh, yeah. accrued to. Um, and then there was a wave, I didn't recognize it as such, um, when people used to say, you know, Peterson's students are all over the country. Yeah, they were. Um, and, uh, and they were a very eclectic bunch. You know, one of, my, one of my favorite students is the same one we talked about before, Paul Oleksia, um, who never taught a graduate course. He was in an undergraduate situation. And, and several of my students wound up that way and I have so much respect for those, those people and the mission that they wanted to accomplish. They wanted to work with undergraduates. Um, and, and that's so much different than I want to chase grants and have graduate students right. and, and have a worldwide horizon for my field work or whatever the, the law allows. Well, you know, I started out at Hope College, which is very near, Holland, Michigan's very near Kalamazoo. Yes. And I went and gave a seminar there once, but uh, but I couldn't take it. It's a hard life. It is a hard life. Yeah. yeah. So I was lucky to, to leave Hope and go to LSU. But sometimes I had like 30 hours, contact hours of teaching with yes. the labs. Yes, absolutely. All. Yeah. yeah. So he stuck it out and did well. Yes. One of the strange things that Karen and I observe all the time is on our campus, the difference between the teaching loads in, for example, ecology and evolutionary biology, our department, mm -hmm. or physics, or chemistry. And yet, then you go to history, and sociology, and romance languages, and you want to see a, a teaching load. Yeah. Yeah. And the dean complains because they're not getting grants. Well, okay, put them in the, in the classroom for three different courses every semester, mm -hmm. and you're not going to get very many grants. Yeah. 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 So, I guess... Can I die now? You can die now. <laughs> You've given your interview. Got it. Got Don't it. you dare. <laughs> not on our, our watch. No.